Hello and welcome to the crypto channel where I try to bring you the news without the hype. The first thing we're going to look at is from BC Backer. As the masses get shook out during the August dip, selling low to buy lower, they now desperately seek reassurance that a big dip will come for them to re-enter. But their odds dwindle as total enters sign of strength. Total market cap where the fireworks happens. So BC Backer is just highlighting that there's many, many people that have been thinking the market's going to go much lower so they've been selling low to try and get in lower um, he's of the mind that we are going to we are in that territory where we're going to start ramping up for the bull run if if not some people think the bull run has kind of already started uh, basically there's movement in the market and his chart analysis is directing us to the idea that we're not going to see any lower prices than what we've got now Obviously, all eyes are focused on Bitcoin because frustratingly, Bitcoin seems to determine this market. Time will tell. Okay, Cheeky Crypto put out, which crypto is your best performer in 2023 so far? I'm curious to see which crypto projects have performed the best for my fellow crypto degen so far this year. Uh, I, put, I included this because if you're listening to this, include in the comments if you hold any particular altcoins or cryptos that have done really, really well. From my point of view, uh, Floki, Floki, if you look at the kind of the yearly chart, has actually done really well depending when you bought in. It's, it's up well over 100%. Um, and I'm sure there's many, many other kind of small cap cryptos out there that have done extremely well. Okay, Mr. Huber. Always an interesting person uh, to hear his thoughts. Sorry, I can't remember the source, but someone from Ripple once said that the escrow is part of their strategy that they can't just be bought up by a major correspondent in an IPO. Point I personally took from this was that the price of XRP and at an IPO must be high enough. Uh, let me just open this. Must be high enough that even the JP Morgan cannot just buy 50% of their ownership. So he's basically just talking about Ripple in the past, how they've spoken about why the price needs to be high before they IPO. So a lot of people are going, oh, well, you know, we've got uh, Swift. Uh, not Swift, the um, Swell, rather. The Swell event that happens, I think it's the 9th of November, 8th to 9th of November, uh, or around about then. Uh, so the big event, and often there's a lot of hype where they think there's going to be big announcements. So often, if you look at the XRP charts, the price will go up, and then as soon as the Swell conference has been done, the price comes down. That's kind of my historic take from it. But they're basically saying, uh, so a lot of people speculate that maybe they'll announce them like an IPO at this thing. Uh, I don't think they do. And I believe that when you have an intent IPO, you actually have to need to register for uh, various documents. And I would imagine the crypto community would find those documents. Again, I don't know if they're visible to the public before you actually get granted the IPO. However, the point is from this post, he's saying that the price of XRP would need to be high before Ripple, the company IPO, because they don't want companies like JP Morgan just coming up and buying up, buying up all the rest, uh, all their XRP. And that is also why they have the escrow, because someone can't just come along and buy everything up. So they're basically trying to Ripple, the company is trying to grow this healthy ecosystem. And then it makes me think of things like Ethereum. So a lot of people bash uh, Ripple and XRP saying that Ripple owns such a huge amount of XRP that it's not decentralized. Uh, and I think you can, the thing about Ripple is they've always tried to be as transparent as they possibly can. This transparency has actually been used against them by the SEC in the court of law, but they continue to be transparent. But then you look at groups like Ethereum and I think Ethereum will do great things. But so often when you look at kind of the disguised whales and everything bad that's happened with Ethereum. There's just so much dodgy stuff that makes you ask questions. But we live in, in such an upside down world now that, you know, we've got the biggest entities in the world like BlackRock saying that they want exposure to Bitcoin. This coin that's created by somebody who we don't even know who Satoshi is apparently uh, but yeah, all the big players, the billionaires and the trillion dollar companies are all of a sudden going to start playing with this asset class that was created by a mystery person. I mean, the world is insane at the moment. And when you really think about the fact that what Bitcoin has done and the narratives that have gone with it, and then you look at Ethereum and so many questions and the disguised whales, but yet those disguised whales, we don't know who they are and how much do they own? I mean, 
yeah, how much do they own of Ethereum? Do they own own enough that they could actually damage the price if they collectively got together? I don't know. These are just questions that I would love to know the answers. And this is why I am so fascinated and interested in XRP, because I believe they are the most transparent out of them all. I think this has been a wild west of a, a technology where many, many people weren't even sure whether what they were doing. I saw a, a, an interview with David Schwartz from back in the day where he said, with this stuff that we're doing, we didn't even know if you end up in prison doing it because no one's ever done it before. It's groundbreaking, brand new technology to the market and we're finding use cases for this technology. So everything's just been a bit crazy at the moment. And out of all the companies that seem to be taking a serious approach to it and working with the regulators has been Ripple the company and I think that will that for me is something that I'm interested in investing someone that wants to work with kind of the incumbent so to speak because as Brad Garlinghouse says they'll roll the banks down the road before they ever give up power of their financial system so time will tell what happens with everything but from my point of view I do think Bitcoin's going to do very well I think Ethereum's going to do very well but it's a crazy world I mean we live in an insane world where you know trillion dollar companies like BlackRock now want to play with something like Bitcoin who that was created by someone who we don't know no one knows apparently who Satoshi is maybe governments do and they're not just releasing it but it's still just a weird weird concept that yeah these yeah Bitcoin who made it oh we don't know but we're going to just invest billions of dollars into it um crazy okay Elon Musk is making a slight change to creator monetization. Any posts that are connected to community notes become ineligible ineleg for revenue shares. So he's just trying to basically make people do honest posts because at the moment people are just putting posts out there that are, you know, not true and not honest, but they get a lot of uh, attention because they're like their sens sensationalism posts, as he puts it. So I think that's a good move for X. Gold Telegraph, since the beginning of 2022, the yen has fallen 23% against the dollar. In the same time frame, the yen has fallen over 40% against gold. That is what currency destruction looks like. So the yen is not doing well. I know that Japan, the country, has not been doing well ever since the 2008 crisis. Uh, for whatever reason, they seem to never quite recover. Uh, but the point I included this post was because Many, many people are talking about the destruction of the US dollar and you've got the BRICS nations and everyone's going to de-dollarize and sell all of their US dollars and the uh, dollar is just going to crash. That's kind of one side of the thought process, but the other side of the thought process is, well, if you look at other currencies around the world, perfect example, the yen, like they're talking about now, the US dollar is still the strongest currency around. So compared to other currencies, when the world is in such financial turmoil, the dollar is still a better thing to hold than most of these other countries' currencies. So I don't, I kind of agree with that side, that the camp that kind of goes, I think there'll be a slow decline of the dollar, but you won't see a an amazing kind of crash of the dollar simply because it's one of the strongest currencies out there uh, and it's better to hold dollars than any of the others. Okay, Dark Horse put out the WEF have released a PDF for the e evolution of nfts and this breakdown is surprisingly informative i did not realize how many brands in different industries have found so many types of use cases for nfts also surprising that the wef produced this so nfts tokenization of the world uh, is kind of where the ideas are flowing and the money is going towards tokenization where you can literally break up any idea into thousands of pieces and sell off those thousands of people to people thousands of pieces to people a perfect example is Rihanna, who is going to sell 0.0003% of revenue from her top selling songs. And so, for example, and this will be this is sold as an NFT, has been sold as an NFT to her fans. So what happens when you stream off Spotify, for example, inside the code, as soon as that is streamed, her song is streamed, 0.0003% royalty will be sent to whoever owns the NFT. So it's fantastic for the artists, it's fantastic for uh, speculative buyers who actually think, you know, whoever you invest in, you think you're going to obviously do better than the amount you paid for the NFT. But if you think about, uh, there was a fascinating movie 
about Nike and how they sponsored Michael Jordan and how they tailored the shoe around him. But at the time, Michael Jordan, he was an unknown entity. No one knew that he was going to be the biggest, most famous player the world has ever seen. And so NFTs will give you a chance with these new athletes coming to whichever sport. If you really uh, are a sports fanatic and you see something unique about a particular athlete, well, chances are those athletes will be selling off like parts of them as NFTs. And imagine back in the day, you could have bought NFTs of Michael Jordan and you saw something in Michael Jordan that nobody else did, just like Nike the company did. They saw that he was, it's a fantastic video uh, movie to watch, but they saw something so special in Michael Jordan that they, they changed their entire business model and designed a shoe completely around him, which no other company had, had done before. But what was also interesting is they changed the color of the shoe. And when you play in the NBA, your shoes need to be of a certain color code or you get fined $5,000 for every game. And Nike said, we're going to change the color of your shoe. And Michael Jordan said, but I'm going to get $5,000 fine every game. And they said, yeah, we want the $5,000 fine because it, it creates hype. It creates people looking at our shoes. So the, uh, Nike paid that $5,000 fine every single match. Um, and the rest is history, as they say, because the world knows who Michael Jordan is. And Michael Jordan's shoes still make hundreds of millions of dollars for him in profit per year. OK, the Martini guy says all coins are exploding right now. So I have been looking around and you do see some uh, definitely movement within the crypto space, which is which is exciting to see. He also says you will be the first millionaire in your family. OK, Gold Telegraph, without health, nothing matters. Look after yourself, laugh, love and discover your passion. That's life. Short trip. I included this because I'm a personal trainer and I think it's fantastic advice because without your health, it doesn't matter if you're the richest person around. If you do not have your health, then you really can't do the things you want to do with your life. So look after yourself, do fitness, do exercise, do healthy eating. No one's perfect, but it's been uh, my whole life is about fitness. I always encourage people to get out, get active, but it doesn't. It's not just about a physically healthy body. It's also about a physically healthy mind. I promise you, if you start working out at your local gym or take yourself for runs or do something, you will feel mentally better, so much better, especially if you stick with the program for a few months. And I think always the key to fitness is if you do it enough, it becomes like a part of your life. Um, so it's a lifestyle as opposed to a quick get fit for my holiday because if you get fit for your holiday chances are you'll look better than you did before for your holiday but then after your holiday you'll just let everything go again and you'll keep kind of repeating this process whereas if you stay fit for life you're going to feel good forever you're going to mentally feel strong all the time and you're going to be the best version of yourself that you possibly can and if you're a healthier, stronger, more vibrant person, then you can be a healthier, stronger, more vibrant, vibrant parent, worker, whatever. It just uh, magnifies everything in your life. So if you don't do fitness, uh, get into fitness. Breaking news, Argentina's oil producers will be barred from exports unless they increase fuel supplies to address shortages in the country. A lot of people are thinking that this winter in Europe, you're going to see a lot of kind of crazy uh, prices with oil, just like we've seen over the last few years. Everyone's been stretched at the moment. People are struggling to pay for their rent. People are struggling, struggling to pay for their mortgages. People are struggling to pay for food. And as soon as kind of energy prices go up, it's just another kind of another bad piece of news for the for the world as a whole uh, and for families. All coins daily. I want to wake up one day and see $1 million in my bank account with crypto. I know it's possible. Yeah, I included this because I think this is why we're all in crypto uh, and especially a lot of young people are in crypto because they see it as it's the only way they're ever going to get out of the rat, rat, rat race. There is no other place around that gives you the potential of kind of what we're what we're doing and what we're invested in and this is another reason why i'm so passionate about xrp and why i think ripple the company is such a great company because the things they're doing and the people that they have working for ripple they literally have the dream team working for them and the connections that they have 
I enjoy knowing that I literally don't need to do anything other than hold my investment. And then I know that a company like Ripple, a very, very wealthy company out there, is buying up companies, they're innovating, they've got the arguably one of the world's uh, top cryptographers, David Schwartz, working for them. I think Brad Garlinghouse is a great CEO. He's always very, he's got the qualities that you would hope to have in a CEO. I think they're a great team. And I think the fact is we just have to sit here and do nothing. And if all goes well and they, you know, if Ripple can uh, produce just kind of a few percent of what they have been promising over the years, I think we'll all do very, very well. So here it is, Colin Brown, Colin Brown. Hold on to your seats. Rumors are swirling in the XRP community that a Ripple IPO bombshell might drop at the Swell Conference in Dubai. Will the crypto world witness history? Don't blink, this could be a game changer. changer. Again, I think this post is like the sensationalization that Elon Musk is talking about, uh, where people just put stuff out to get hype, get engagement. And this has quite a lot of engagement. It's got 37,000 views on it. Um, yeah, I knew that these um, rumours would start circulating because any time Ripple, the company, have a meeting, just like when they had the proper party uh, to celebrate the win over the SEC, there were all the rumours of exactly the same stuff. They're going to make a major announcement. They're going to reveal a huge partnership. And they didn't. They just said, we're just having a party and saying well done to everyone. Um, so these are just rumours. King Solomon, user experience in crypto right now is a shit sandwich. Just spent three hours going through old wallets, updating to new wallets, writing down 12 to 24 words. If it's a pain for me, it's a pain for 99% of the population that have no education, desire to onboard. We've got to do better. This has really been my gripe, gripe with all of crypto during this period of time. It's just so hard for people to get their head around of how to custody your own crypto. So many people that I've spoken to who have shown interest in wanting to get into this space and then they're like, oh, how do you hold it and how does it work? And when you explain to them, to them, their eyes just glaze over and you can just see they're going, yeah, this just sounds like more effort than it's worth. So when a lot of these big players are trying to come into the space like uh, BlackRock, Vanguard, JP Morgan, etc., you know, you always know that these usual the, the usual suspects, as I like to call them, will always get involved in this space. But I think when these big kind of companies that have, I guess, the trust of populations, and I use that word loosely, they've got the setup so that, for example, with your current bank, if you have £100,000 in your bank account, you trust that that £100,000 is going to be there. And most banks around the world will give a guarantee of a certain amount of money. But when you look at the crypto exchanges, so much happens where, you know, during peak times in the market, when you've got price action happening, uh, things like Coinbase just all of a sudden go down or you've got the uh, airdrops and all of a sudden Coinbase isn't giving people their airdrops of money and other people just going, I've been locked out of my account. And there's just so much uh, such a bad user experience and custodying your own crypto is a pain in the backside. Understand the ledgers, working out how to do it. It just turns so many people off. I think the day that we can have it where you literally just click onto your bank branch and it says, oh, would you like to buy some crypto? And you go, yes, please. And you just click a button and the bank will custody that crypto for you. That's when the world will really have exposure to crypto in a meaningful way. Okay, not too much longer to go. XRP Crypto Wolf. Ripple is the only blockchain company that defeated the SEC, so they don't have to worry about them anymore. We are, people often forget good news and we're all guilty of it. And often when I see things like this, I'll include them in the videos because it is a great reminder that as we go into the bull run, the hopeful bull run that is happening anytime now, we are one of the, we are the only blockchain company that has defeated the SEC. So we don't have to worry about them. Any other crypto at this point in time, I mean, the SEC could land a lawsuit just as they're starting to enter their bull run, which is exactly what the SEC did to us in 2020, just before Christmas. They could time their attack perfectly. Um, so, for example, with Ethereum, I don't think the SEC will attack Ethereum because they seem to have a lot of friends that like Ethereum and connections, as you've seen with the whole like ETHgate scandal. Um, so I don't really think the SEC would go after Ethereum. But as an example, 
if they did go after something like Ethereum just during just as price action was happening, uh, just before the bull run, it would uh, it would damage them to no end. So I'm very very thankful to be in XRP and Ripple for that reason, and it's good to remember uh, that we have defeated the SEC and our time is almost done with being attacked by the SEC, and hopefully they go away. Okay, I'm going to call it a day for this video. It has been a, a long weekend. Hopefully this video made some sense. Uh, I probably drank a few too many beers over the weekend. Uh, thank you as always for listening. If you're new to the channel, then please subscribe. If you like what I'm doing, then please hit the like button. It pushes this video out to more people. And remember, this is just for fun. It is not financial advice. Thank you.